Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm out here at Jensen Tractor and Equipment in Bartlesville, Oklahoma today to do a comparison between a couple of different tractors. Both of these machines are the same horsepower. They cost pretty close to the same amount, but they're very different machines that serve different purposes. So what I want to do today is give a review on this 55 horse Boomer tractor that fits into our lineup of all the Hydrostat 55 horse tractors we've been comparing from every brand. I also want to compare this tractor to this one and answer the question, how big is too big? Because each of these tractors has a perfect customer that it's designed for, but it's not the same customer. And then I want to give my review on the Workmaster 55 after one week of running it and give my opinion on New Holland as a brand because a lot of the farmers who live near me run New Holland tractors. So we'll go into all that, but right now I want to get in this tractor and run it because it's new to me and I've spent the last day doing all my research so I know everything I can possibly know about it to compare it to the other brands. I've also got some literature from New Holland telling me why this might be a better tractor. All right, so I've jumped up here in the cab and I've got the operator's manual so I can make sure I'm giving you guys good information. I've also got a competitive comparison between a Boomer 55 and a Kubota L5460. And I'm going to thumb through that and give you guys the high points of advantages, pros, and cons between these two very similar tractors. I've already done a video talking about the Kubota L5460 that is a premium tractor and it is the most expensive tractor we've looked at. I'll tell you the New Holland has a lot of premium features but it comes in about $10,000 less than that competitive Kubota tractor. So they have basically the same horsepower. The Kubota is only available in Hydrostat. This can be had in a Hydrostat or a gear drive. I'm in the Hydrostat model right now. And once again, these are talking points from New Holland, not necessarily my opinion. I'm just telling you what they are telling us makes it great. So it has a common rail direct injection three-cylinder engine. The Kubota is a four-cylinder engine. Now it says that this common rail direct injection, which it Common rail is used in my diesel truck. It's also used in the Mahindra tractors. But it says that that is going to give you more power and torque with improved fuel efficiency. It also has an engine speed management system we'll look at in a minute. Now this is a big one and this one is a real advantage that this machine has a mid PTO. Very few tractors in this size range will have a mid PTO. And it's not just a mid-PTO option. The mid-PTO is standard. And factor that into the pricing. I believe the last machine I saw that had the mid-PTO on a tractor this size was the Massey Ferguson. And I said, do people really run mid-mount mowers on these a lot? And he said, they do run them. And you can also use that mid-PTO for a snowblower. There could be other applications for a mid-PTO, but I don't know what they are. One thing I like about having a mid-PTO when I'm not using it is if I need to re rotate the PTO shaft, I can flip the lever from rear PTO to mid-PTO, and now I have a freewheeling P uh, PTO. And that helps for hooking up your shaft if the implement doesn't turn easily. I've seen some tractors that have don't have a mid-PTO, but they have a PTO manual disconnect so that you can spin it like that. Now here's a cool thing about the literature from New Holland. They're telling you that they have less hydraulic flow than that Kubota. This has 8.2 gallons per minute. The Kubota has 9.4. Lift capacity on the loader, 2360 for Kubota, 2370 for... And that's completely negligible, so you're going to say the same lift capacity. A breakout force on the Kubota is 3100. On the New Holland, it's 4,000. So lift the same amount, but you're actually having 1,000 extra pounds of breakout force. It says your loader cycle time is 11 seconds and 13 seconds on the Kubota, so your loader should move faster. Rear lift capacity on the New Holland machine is 2,700 pounds. Now I've looked at lift capacity on the back of all of these machines, and 2,700 pounds is right around in the range. 28, 27, 28, 3100, 
That Kubota L series is a real outlier that it lives 3,800 pounds on the three point and nothing else is close to that. Once again, they're publishing the pros and the cons in their literature. For comparison, the MX model from Kubota has the same rear lift capacity. It's only 2,800. And that tractor is priced comparable to this, even though it, that's an economy tractor and this is more of a premium tractor. So I thought this was really cool that they provided this information to me without trying to cherry pick only the information that was in their favor. So I think now we'll run this a little bit, scoop up some dirt, just push all the buttons, pull all the levers, see how everything works, and then we'll come back and finish our comparison. This tractor is made by LS. The big tractor is made by New Holland. And I don't consider that to be a negative about a brand, because if you look at the entirety of the tractor industry, it's very common for one manufacturer to make certain models for another manufacturer based on the capacity, uh, different you know, manufacturing facilities, things like that. But it doesn't make it the same tractor as an LS. For instance, New Holland puts their own loader on. I've test drove the same size and horsepower LS. It has different options, different controls, different features to the tractor. There's a lot of things about this tractor that are different than the LS that in theory would be the same machine. So let's fire it up and let me show you what all the buttons and switches do in here. All right, so here we've got like our turn signals and our lights. This is your cruise control button. This is turning your regen on and off. So you've got hazards, a horn, and cab lights. Here is your PTO on and off. Here's your hand throttle. Here's your selector for your PTO, mid PTO, and rear PTO. Now mine can run both PTOs. It doesn't look like you have that setting on here. Here is your diff lock where most companies put it and your four wheel drive lever. In and out of four wheel drive, just like that. A lot of people you do that with their foot. It says right on it, don't use your foot. Here we have a three-point lever. Next to it is draft control, which is an option on the tractor. This one does not have draft control, but you could get it that way. Here we have our controls for the rear remote hydraulics. Got two levers. There's spots for two more. These are more lights tractor has a lot of lights. This is front wiper, rear wiper, and these are beacons. This is a beacon. So apparently for going down the highway. This is the speed management switch. So you hit this and you get a light on the dash. This light here shows you that you're using the speed management system. Now you see when I turn that on with the tractor moving We've got this light right here, and we're at 2,500 RPMs. Now I push this speed management down. Now what that does is give you presets so if I want to do something at a lower throttle, but when I have the tiller running, I want it to automatically go to this throttle. Just instead of using the hand lever or whatever the case may be, you have a pre-saved setting for a speed. And that's different than cruise control. So cruise control can be done different ways. On this specific machine, when you push the cruise control button, which is a little electronic button, it physically locks your, your hydrostat pedals. So you can't push the pedal any further. So all that is, is giving your foot a break from trying to hold in the same position the whole time. We've got our joystick for the loader over here. Our three range 
finder stat is controlled right here, which is not how it is on most tractors. You have the automotive style emergency brake. This tractor does not have auto throttle from everything I can find in the manual. I don't see any reference to an auto throttle, which is something people call it a link pedal. It's, I call it an auto throttle. I'm a fan of that. All right, let's uh, run the tractor a little bit, see how she feels. Emergency brake off. Go mid range. Let's see if I can demonstrate this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I'm going to let off the pedal and see how far we coast. Off. One thing that stands out to me is these hydrostats, it's very yeah, it's beeping at me. It responds very quickly. Now, there's two ways of describing that. You can either say it's responsive, and that's a positive, or it's jerky, and that's a negative. So I had a neighbor bring his tractor over, and he said that my loader was really jerky. I said, yours seems sluggish. So is it responsive or is it jerky? Another thing is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm pulling this all the way back and watch the loader come up. say we have very responsive loader controls and I'm able to do two functions at a time. It moves faster than I'm used to which is throwing me off. It comes up slow but down curl and dump are very fast. All right so not far from the dealership there's this pile of junk and, and dirt and brush and everything else and this is the best playground I have here on location to try to do any real work. So I'm gonna see if I can push into this pile and move some dirt, see if that tells us anything about the way the tractor performs. As you watch this next clip, keep in mind this tractor has no ballast weight whatsoever. And at home, I would never run a tractor without any weight on the back, but that's what we've got today. Okay, the front tires are a nice size. I have not been logging the size of every tractor I looked at, but I think these are as big as any of the other tractors in this class range. The rear tire is a 17.5-24, so that's the same size rear tire. This loader sticks out further than a lot of the other 
loaders I've looked at in this range, especially John Deere, where you look at this geometry right here, this would drop straight down a lot more, which makes the John Deere more compact, but it also makes it harder to see the bucket and reduces your lift height. So I don't know the lift height on that machine, so I can't make a comment about that. You'd have to Google lift height, but I believe this should give you more lift height with the design. And it definitely gives you better visibility on your bucket. One thing I saw pointed out in another video is how beefy this torsion bar that goes between the two loader rails is. They were saying that that's really going to help prevent you from having a tweaked or bent loader. And that is pretty substantial got all the things you would expect in a tractor this class your quick attach bucket quick attach loader our hydraulic connection points are down here where with the LS I believe they were behind the loader mount so that's a case where I mentioned earlier it's made by LS but it's not made like an LS you know the company New Holland in this case still lays out what they want it to be like, and it's made to that specification. We've got an entry point from each side. This right here makes it a little bit cramped to get in from this side, which is the case on most of these tractors. Now the Workmaster gives you a lot more room to step in and out. But this is a nice wide open door with a shock. If you remember, the John Deere doesn't give you a shock on this side, so it just flops open which is kind of disappointing. As I said while I was in the tractor, you've got a lot of lights on the outside. Got the step on both sides. We come to the back. We've got some pros and cons. Like I said, the dual rear remotes are priced in. We've got telescoping stabilizers, extendable draft arms. A Little bit of a smaller tow bar. This machine can have draft control, but this model is not equipped with the draft control. And you can see that by the way this is bolted on here. Non-hinged PTO cover. Nice mechanism here for your adjustment on the side link. One thing that's notably missing, if this was an LS tractor or a TYM or any other brand, it has a mechanism for raising and lowering the three-point from off the tractor. And I don't believe this model has that. And it's something I'd like to see. Let's wrap up a review of this tractor real quick and see how it compares to the other hydrostats. Things I liked about it. Feels ergonomic to sit in the cab. It's comfortable. The specs are in line with the other tractors this size. It is priced around the midpoint between our cheapest, least expensive tractor being TYM, followed by LS, and our most expensive being Kubota, followed by John Deere. With the Kubota being 63,000, the TYM being about 36,000, and this coming in at 53. For that 53, you're getting some things that may not have been included on the price with the Kubota because that includes the rear remotes and a mid PTO, which were not in my quote from Kubota. So if you value a mid PTO, that's a big deal. As far as running it, it feels efficient. There are a lot of similarities to the Korean tractors I've shown before, like the fuel tank is the same in the same spot. Just the overall feel of it feels pretty similar to that. I felt like it had a, a tiny bit more coast than I wanted on the pedals, but that's something you get used to. And I was also not used to how jerky the loader controls are. They're very responsive. This tractor is also currently in a configuration that I would never run it in, which is no weight on the back at all. And you can feel that for sure when you push into that dirt. So I think this is a solid offering if you're in the market for a hydrostatic tractor this size. Now let's compare it to the Workmaster and see who I think is an ideal customer for each. Do you want a tractor this size, which is a very clear utility tractor? This is a farm or ag tractor, or do you want the biggest, strongest 
compact tractor you can get and it really depends on what you're doing if you're a farmer you're absolutely going to this tractor and you're thinking the only problem is you didn't get a bigger one I mean, bigger is better for farming you're in fields most of the time you want to be able to lift as high as you can this will lift like two feet higher than this one i don't have those specs in front of me if i find them i'll put them on the screen but this will lift a lot higher if you need to put hay bales up on the top row this machine's going to do that better now for me personally it's a little bit of a different answer because i take my tractor in the yard a lot and so it can depend on what other machine you have so if you also have a compact tractor that you can use for work in your yard then this is going to be a better fit but if you take this tractor with ag tires in your yard it's going to it's going to leave ruts and the turning radius is a lot bigger so if you're doing that type of work you might be more interested in this machine the farmers who live near me mainly run two colors they're running john deere green and new holland blue now you'll see something else here and there but guys that have hay and cattle and even doing row crop around me there's a lot of even much bigger tractors than this they consider this a serious brand for their farm and how am i going to review this tractor my plan was that today i would record a review video on this tractor but you saw me running it I was like a monkey with a football. How am I going to give a review on something that I'm not used to? It's bigger than I'm used to. It's got more power than I'm used to. It's got a shuttle shift that I'm not used to. So I'll leave the review to the fact that my neighbors chose this tractor and they love it. And I asked them, why did you buy New Holland? And they said, because it's a better price, a better value than John Deere, and it still makes the hay. And at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Now, if you're after this tractor, you're probably a different customer. You're doing more what I do, which is moving a lot of dirt. And for dirt moving, this is fantastic. It, uh, it's so much more convenient to move dirt with a shuttle shift. You want to level out your driveway. This is going to be more convenient. You want to set a log on a sawmill. This is going to be more convenient. It's got better control for creeping up to the mill and stopping in exactly the right place and setting it down where this can do that but it takes more skill and more attention to detail to do the same thing this is a little bit better yard tractor my little john deere is an amazing lawn tractor whereas this is going to leave a bigger rut than the john deere this is going to leave a much bigger rut than the john deere so for me i would lean more towards this with a set of r4 tires and a hydrostat over this with ag tires and a power shift but the other thing for what i do is one of the biggest demands one of the reasons i need a bigger machine is i carry heavy logs and i don't like carrying heavy logs with a small machine even if that machine can get it off the ground and carry it that axle on that machine is smaller it's not stable you're more likely to flip that machine over trying to handle that log and you come up to this you're going to be more stable and more lift you come up to this it's a whole nother level of stability you're not going to roll this tractor over unless you're doing something crazy so huge difference between them which one is better for you is going to be dependent on your use case in terms of price this tractor's coming in today at 53,000. This one's coming in at 57,000. And those are cash prices today. Next week they might be different, and if you want to finance it, there'll be more cost added for financing. Every dealer that I've been to of every brand, of every tractor has had a cash price and a finance price. It's just the facts. There's no 0% financing anywhere ever for anything. If you're getting 0% financing, you're paying for it in your purchase price. And if you're walking up to buy something with cash, make sure that you tell them you're not paying the finance price because they advertise the finance price. You walk up with cash, they'll be glad to sell it to you for the finance price. Make sure you get that cash price. But I can't tell you how grateful I am to Jensen Tractor and Equipment for letting me use this tractor for the last week and demo this tractor here today. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to do this, and I hope it adds value to you guys. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. 
I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.